Hello everybody and welcome back to Skyblock. It has been a long time, but we have got a ton of stuff done. I am joined by my good friend Sen over here. Again. Hey. Okay. So let's go ahead and start this off by showing you this fancy chicken farm that we finally made that I said I was going to make in episode one. Whoops. We made it out of a bunch of ugly leaves blocks that's hard to see through, but glass is expensive, so bear with me. Okay, so a quick explanation. The chickens make their eggs, they come down this water, and it all gets sucked up by a hopper somewhere back here. Over here. Put into this dropper here. The eggs will then be fired up and hit into that wood block right there which will make more chickens. Those come back into the killing chamber here, where when they grow up, they drown in the water and we get me food. We also have this awesome make more chickens mode. Okay, that retracted this piston where before the eggs hit that wood block, now they go all the way up there and they make more chickens up here. So basically, instead of using a bunch of dropper and redstone to move around the chickens, we're using water streams. And that's the gist of it. So this is something me and Sen designed together. And it's awesome. We get lots of yummy chicken somewhere. Okay, yeah, that's not very much. I guess we've been yeah, eating look it. Look here, look here. Over here. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, tons of chicken. And feathers and whatnot. This is a cow farm I designed. So, if you press, uh, if you step on the pressure plate, the dispenser activates, which shoots out water to let the cows bump. So you can easily breed them. If we had wheat, then we don't have wheat. <laughs> yeah. The, then the water pushes them down here. So all the babies get pushed down, and if they grow, we can kill them. We can also crush them. And this just closes the gate back there. Yeah, so you can make more breeders. Yeah. And then if we have splash potions around, we don't edit right now, but you could use that with a looting sword we got from the zombie pigmen to get extra meat. I think that's most everything that's around here. Let's go ahead and <laughs> jump over here. Oh. Okay, so over here, this is where our witch drop stuff was. We've taken out the weird storage system we had here. Oh, it's still around. But anyways, now the witch <laughs> drops get funneled into these chests, which then... Oh, we haven't hooked it up yet, but there'll be a dropper here. Yeah. Basically spits out all the items into this water stream. And let's go ahead and follow it. Ugh. Whoop. <laughs> oh, you're... Diamond gears everywhere. <laughs> My turn. <laughs> you have to feather, feather, feather falling boots. I failed. I don't think I can ender pearl up there. Now I'm suffocating. <laughs> okay, let's go around. <laughs> <laughs>that we have been working on for quite some time still under construction but let's take a quick tour around all right so this design we're trying to use a design made by Seth Bling 
to get items automatically sorted into different chests. So here are a bunch of chests from the mob farm that will be sorted here. You put basically one item in every slot and then the chest will just fill up with items from a hopper in the back. We only got one of these things set up. The ice pass we were just following is almost connected to this thing, but it isn't yet. Over there at the mob farm, we have a dropper spinning stuff into this water stream, comes up, goes into these hoppers, gets sorted into these chests. Uh, we have a second floor here too. Basically just comes down into this overflow area. So here is our same line of chests from the mob farm that all came down here. But now it's being put into this dropper that's on a clock, constantly firing items over this direction to the item elevator and up there. And to this crazy redstone madness that really we're gonna have to build one of these for every single row of chests we do. On the edges, this is where we sort all the stuff from various farms around the place. And so over here is where we plan on doing witch drop stuff when we get to it. And then in the corners, this is manual sorting stuff where we just put whatever we want to. Yeah. We have, in making this thing, we have destroyed most of the cobblestone platform. And right there, there's this single piece of bedrock that's left. Everything else is pretty much destroyed. There's a couple things on the outer rim that are still left behind, but most of it's gone. Here we are at the iron farm. This still, thing still breaks a ton, but there has been a modification that I've been trying to make over the past while, and that is to remove all of the pistons possible. There's still a couple, but in the process of removing them, which means making a giant clock here, it still breaks every once in a while. And we got a new problem with the iron golems getting clogged up there without falling down. I don't know how, what causes that. But we also have a lever up there at the top that can send iron golems from the farm to a couple other places that we want to. One of them is over here. Uh, shall I switch it? Switch. Oh yeah, go ahead. There we go. So now iron golems should be falling down. Yeah, but the water isn't updating. Oh. Hmm. Whoop. I pushed it though. We're sending iron golems down to the slime farm. Oh. Because the slimes tend to kill the iron golems at the bottom. And so this is our easy solution. So here we are in the slime farm. Unfortunately, Sin can't make it with me for the rest of this video, so I'm going to be doing this solo. But we're at the slime farm now, and it's a little bit dangerous here. This is a design made by the Zipcrowd server, where you can have water pour over this whole thing to turn it off. Alright, so up here, we have an off button. It's in a very inconvenient place, but yeah, it'll make the water flow, which keeps slime from spawning. At the bottom is where we send the iron golems to. We don't have any there right now because over time they eventually die. The iron golems will go there and then kill the slimes. Here, we have this minecart system to pick up all the slime balls. Basically the way it works is we have to send off one minecart which will go around under everything to collect the slime block and by the time it comes, slime balls. So I'll come back here, hire this detector rail which will send off another minecart waiting here. And then it itself will come up here and land in this spot. And so there's always two. One is always unloading its slime balls while the other one is pushing more. Over here we have an awesome reef farm made by Sin. And this was made so that we could do some, have paper for villager trading. This thing, let's just look at the redstone in the back. We've got one giant clock here that once that redstone block comes around to one of these positions, not sure which, it'll power redstone dust, 
making all the slime blocks extend. And then there was only one sticky piston behind each row of slime blocks. And so it's just a basic clock powered respawn. Over here we had some villager. I don't even remember what he gave, but it was a really good trade. Sin did a lot of trading over here. This is our villager trading hall. It's a design similar to Tango Tech. And here's all of our villagers that we can just quickly trade with. And then if we don't want them, we can dispose of them just by pushing this button. There's automatic water sorting stuff up there to bring the villagers into the cages. We can just take a quick peek. Yep, here's the top. And then here's some of the redstone. Now down here we have a villager breeder that was designed for older than 1.8 so they could just automatically breed. But now they won't do that so what you have to do is throw in food and then they'll breed. And we didn't really plan on making anything more fancy than that. So it looks like for whatever reason a lot of them have died in here. Here we are at the iron foundry again. I'm just going to go ahead and flick this lever, Oop. which is going to open up a secret little gateway for these columns to be able to push out. So we can squeeze through here. Now they can come out and through this portal. And so kind of like the slime farm, there's another thing we have that needs more golems. And so we created uh, this passageway to let the golems through and I'll just quickly go through and show what that is this is it this is our golem pusher and you'll see that it pushes down golems to looks like nearly the end right into here so they come out of that portal over there and we needed the golems to be somewhere else so we had to make it so that they can land on this pressure plate which then triggers all these pistons that just go and push the golems quickly across and into this awesome little cell right here. So this is just a place for these pigmen to spawn and then we just fill this place full of iron golems and this will allow us to go and first of all you can walk through here and get tons of experience but also it just gives us tons and tons of gold. So this is the system we've been using. There's also hopper minecarts underneath that would go and pick up all of this loot that's being dropped all over the place. And maybe we'll go look at that right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop this here. And we'll see those get picked up eventually. Looks like we were just clearing out the chest recently. Oops. Yeah, so here we have tons of gold nuggets, gold swords, gold ingots. These haven't, yeah. And we've been storing some of this stuff in chests off to the side, but it just gives us so much stuff. Here are the hopper minecarts going back and forth underneath. And eventually they just go to the end there, and the timer will let them sit there for a while. And the loot gets collected in these hoppers. You'll also notice that chickens do collect up in here, and over time we have to go and kill them just because of the chicken jockeys that spawn. Looks like there's no more pigmen. Oh, there we are. And a magma cube. There's one more thing I wish to show today, and it's a squid in this tiny little pool of water. No, at the top of Cobble Falls, we made a little bit of an extension that goes off into the extreme hill biome where ice forms. Let's just grab one of this guy.
this is an ice farm I designed so that when it's done filling it up, you get one giant pretty cube. But it is not by far the most efficient design. And the reason being is just the amount of redstone it takes to make a single slice. You'd be better off just making a giant ice tray going far out with very cheap redstone clocks and whatnot than doing something like this. And you would, mostly because after AFKing a while, you've got tons more ice now, even if it is a little more inefficient. The redstone here is really big. It costs a lot of redstone to make a single slice. Let's look into it a bit. Yeah, so we got a bit of piston tower here and some redstone here. Yeah. Over here, this is glowstone here. It's just a fancy way to try to keep mobs from spawning within the little patches of ice. There is room for mobs to spawn, and so that tries to slow that down. So the way this works is behind here, the ice will form at the top and be pushed by pistons over here and come down. And you'll see these giant pillars of ice coming down. Once they push far enough, eventually they'll push one of these redstone blocks down. And then that's where all the awesome stuff happens, where the redstone block will be pushed back up. All the ice in this single column will be pushed across. And that's why we get this design like this, because one column is being pushed at a time. Oh, and it just happened right there. Let's just take a quick look at the top. This is where the actual ice gets formed. The pistons on top are necessary for once the ice tray is full and the pistons can't push out the ice. We don't want the ice pushing upwards, so the pistons up here stop that. And yeah, eventually this whole thing becomes full and then we have to harvest it all. And it's a big job. And, and these tiny little columns are where mobs can spawn and so that's why I'm sneaking glowstone down underneath right here is to try to prevent that. And you've got to be really careful because this is ice we're dealing with. You can't just put lights all over the place because it'll melt the ice. And so that's why the ground is slapped. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Skyblock. It has been lots of fun. There will be a world download in the description. It's a little bit older than this version, but it has everything that we've built in it. And you can go and fly around and see everything for yourself. Over there, that's a chunk. Uh, glitch and so I, we do really have a ton of dirt in this world but we haven't traveled over there and what we really need to do is go into empty it and delete that and so in the world download you'll probably see that too it's just a chunk glitch so thank for thank you all for watching and see you later I don't think it's Three, working. two, one, go! Doesn't work. Oh! <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> that was unexpected. <laughs>